Hey guys, how's it going? We're going to try something new on the channel today. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me to do commentary over my time lapses so I can explain to you what I'm doing or thinking at the time and give you tips and stuff on what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to try and do that. We'll see how we go. I don't think I'm going to be very good at it. Uh, but with this particular artwork, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. So I made a lot of mistakes because I wasn't really thinking ahead. And I thought I would talk a lot about making mistakes and why that's okay. And what you can do once you've made a mistake, whether you want to fix it or use it as a learning tool. Um, so yeah, hopefully this goes well. It's going to be a little bit of a longer video than usual. Please stick with me and here we go. I started out by making a few sketches to decide on what I wanted composition wise and I like these two but I chose this one in particular because I wanted to draw Chico's face. So I'm going to be using clutch pencils for the initial sketch today. I don't know why I like them so much. Um, these ones are from Officeworks and they have several different lead colours so I'm using the blues and the black today. Um, for whatever reason when I'm using the clutch pencil I feel freer to do whatever, everything smoother better than mechanical pencil for some reason. Um, the only downside to them is the lead is quite thick and so if you wanted like a really thin point you'd probably have to try and sharpen it um, but using it on a bigger scale like A3 which is what my sketchbook is today is fine. So right now I'm trying to get the initial shape of the artwork down so you saw the sketch earlier it's kind of like an S on the page so that's just what I'm doing here. Because the game isn't out yet here, I haven't played it yet, so I don't actually know off the top of my head what Trico looks like. Um, so these are my reference images. Specifically, I need them for his head shape and his wing shape, and this one up here is for the colours of his feathers. Okay, now I'm going to start drawing the shape of his body and his head out properly. Um, I, I feel like he looks like he moves like a cat, so I'm using my own knowledge of sort of what cat bodies look like and the shapes that they make um, to sort that bit out, but I'm looking at my reference images for his head and his wings and stuff just to make sure I get those correct. So when I get to the boy in a second, I'm going to be using my knowledge of how people look as well instead of using reference images. Um, I just thought I'd mention that how I, I initially set out what a person's shape is going to be is kind of like those wooden artist mannequins that you see where like every joint is a ball and then you just sort of add the limbs and stuff on that way. Um, I think a lot of people learn to draw like this and usually I guess you get out of that habit when you get good but I haven't gotten good yet. So this is what the um, initial sketch looks like. So now I've got everything laid out where I want it. I kind of vaguely know what everything's going to look like. So I'm going to transfer the light blue lead out and put a dark blue lead in. And I'm going to start adding in more definite details. I just wanted to mention, good, good lord, the, the quality of this camera is just shockingly terrible. Um, I apologize that, you know, it was sort of like a, a wider light and then now it's yellow because reasons. I'm getting a new camera probably this month, um, maybe Boxing Day sales. <laughs> um, and it's gonna be fancy and it's gonna have proper HD and I'm gonna have like proper lighting and all the things and it will be glorious. And yeah, that will be coming soon, I promise. So I'm getting photos up on my phone of the boy because I just wanna check what his face shape is and just what his clothes are looking like just because I realized I didn't have any references of him printed out. Um, I also apparently answer a phone call here at one point because I am so professional. I also realized at this point that I'd made the boy too big, um, so I went in and made him a little bit smaller. He's still a little bit too big compared to Trico, but it's better at least. Initially, I decided that I was just going to draw the feathers in with the darker blue. Um, then I whisked out a little bit and decided I was going to go in with the light blue first just to make sure that they're kind of all going in the right direction before I make a little bit more of a definite mark. A little bit here I'm just going to be following those steps of drawing out feathers roughly with the light blue swapping back to the dark blue drawing them in a little bit and then I'm going back in with a putty eraser and I'm just uh, removing a lot of the darkness from the middle bit so it's not so overpowering with detail.
One eternity later. And now I'm going to swap out the dark blue lead for a black one. And I'm going back in and just making the stuff that I want to be really obvious a little bit darker again. Um, and also the stuff that's close to the camera to be a little bit darker so it feels like it's close to the camera. And that's the completed line work. At this point I stopped and had dinner and in that time I asked on social media if people wanted me to colour this in in paint or Copics and what they'd like to see in a video. By the time I'd finished dinner I didn't actually have um, many replies. I had a lot of people liking it and saying they wanted to see the video but no one actually telling me if they wanted Copics or paint. So I decided to start with paint because I had a look at my Copics and realised I didn't have the right grey for his feathers. And here's where everything went terribly wrong. As you can see, the sketchbook paper isn't actually holding the paint as well as I remember it holds paint, so it started to ball up and I had to sort of rethink how I was going to paint this. Um, normally I would do lots of layers while it's wet, but the more you sort of run your brush across the page, if it doesn't really hold water well, um, the more it's going to do this. So I had to sort of start doing light layers of paint and waiting for it to dry and then doing another layer. The only parts that I was really um, pedantic about making sure the page was still wet was where I wanted it to blend really well, so like the darkness under his eyes and sort of up through his snout in the middle of his face. So here's where making mistakes is okay comes in. I don't know what I'm doing, I reckon, 99% of the time when I'm making art. I start with an idea, it goes to a different place that I wasn't expecting it to, I'm in an area where I've never done this before and I'm just going to wing it. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, I sort of, I knew that I could only add certain layers of paint, I couldn't do all the little details on the feathers that I'd intending on doing with the paint, so now I'm sort of just making it up as I go along. So at this point while I'm waiting for it to dry, I decided to check my social media and I discovered everybody was asking for Copics. So I decided, well, you know, why not? Like I already have no idea what I'm doing at this point, I might as well just start mixing Copics in with the paint. And that's okay because that's what art is all about. It's about learning and experimenting and finding new ways of doing things. So if this didn't work out in the end, and I don't think I really like the finished product, it's not as bad as it could have been, but I don't love it. Um, but I learnt some new ways of doing stuff like feathers. I didn't. I don't think I would have ever thought to make you know the end tip dark and then just let it blend in at the bottom, because what I would normally do is try to paint in all the little details. And because I'd done that with the paint now, I decided to start mimicking that with the Copics. So I would never have thought to do that with Copics either because Copics have, you know, a thin tip and I would normally do fine detail with them instead. Making mistakes is really awesome because it forces you to come up with new ways to do things or it gives you the opportunity to say, well, I've stuffed it up now so I might as well have a play. I'm not scared that I'm going to stuff it up because I've already done it. And so one of the most important things I think there is to know as an artist is making mistakes is good and it doesn't reflect on how good you are as an artist or your knowledge of products or anything like that. Mistakes happen and usually from mistakes come awesome things and if it's not that particular artwork in the process of then deciding whether you're going to try and fix it and come up with some miraculous way to make it look awesome once you've stuffed it up or you decide you're just going to try and play with what you've got and see if you can come up with new ways of doing things without the fear of destroying the artwork there's something to be learnt there and I always think making mistakes you need to make sure it becomes a learning experience. Never ever ever throw out an artwork just because you've made a mistake. I used to do that when I was a kid and I regret it to this day. Every single artwork that I did that with because I could have learnt so much and I could have been so much further ahead at this point in my career. So back to the artwork at hand, I've just added some white gel ink and I've discovered over the years with making mistakes I guess that um, if you add water to the gel ink you can actually turn it into a paint. So that's what I'm doing here, I've added a little bit of gel ink and I think it's a little bit too harsh so I'm just adding some water to thin it out a little bit and to make it pop a little less. adding little highlights here with the gel pen to make some of the individual feathers pop, particularly where one feather overlaps another feather so you can see that it's on top of that second feather. So 
So here I'm adding a little bit of a darker outline to the image. Um, at that point I decided that I didn't think it was popping enough off of the background and it was blending in too much. And then later you'll see that I decide that it, I want it to blend into the background and it wasn't, it wasn't sitting in its, um, I guess it's space enough. It didn't seem like it was in the world that I created for it. So that's what I mean by 99% of the time I have no idea what I'm doing. Occasionally you'll see that I'm adding a little bit of uh, thinned white paint down. It's just to knock back certain areas. So behind the wings, I felt like it was too much of the same color and you couldn't tell that it was, you know, sort of a separate layer, like it was behind the wings. It wasn't touching the wings necessarily. So putting some white in sort of knocks it back into the background a little bit further. I also find making sure that you have quite a bit of detail before you knock it back with the white. While it takes longer, it means that once the white's in there, it kind of gives it the effect of when you're taking a photo and like the background further away is blurry, but you still know there are details there. Um, I just find it looks better than trying to fake that, like the details were there. And I'm just going in again, darkening the lines for things that are closer to the camera. So the wings and the head. I'm not going to be touching the tail because that I want to be further back in the image. And I don't want it to be as obvious. So the way I work with Copics most of the time is I tend to do tentative layers, like I'll do one layer that's probably going to be a little bit light and then I'll add another layer and then I'll add another layer and I heavily, heavily rely on the blending Copic, so that's the one that looks like it's white but it's actually just pr pretty much alcohol, so what it does is it blends or thins out the ink that you've already put down. Um, and as you see here, like I just keep adding and then I'll sort of thin it out a little bit with the blender and then I'll add some more and then I'll sort of blend that in and that's how I do everything with Copics. Um, it takes probably 10 times longer than it should, but I feel like it gives it more of a painterly quality once it's finished. And here's where I'm second guessing my outlining of the tail. So I'm just putting some whitewash down, uh, just sort of making sure that it, it starts to sort of push back into the image. It's further back, you can't see as many details. It blends more into the white of the background. So now I'm adding some warmth to the background because I've decided that part of the reason why my characters are blending into the background is everything is a cool palette and I find, you know, the head's popping because it's got some warmth in it. So if I add a little bit of warmth to the background, it might help in differentiating the characters from the background. And I'm going to add a little bit of a ground for them to be standing on. Not too much detail because I don't want it to detract from the characters, but just a little bit because at the moment it looks like they're floating. And here's a quick tutorial on how to refill your Copics with ink. Three twenty-eight a.m. At this point, I decided I've been looking at it for too long, and I can't tell if it's good or not. So I decided to go to bed. In the morning, when my brain is functioning a little bit better, I realize that I've made a big mistake with the wings. The big feathers at the bottom look like they're coming towards you, but they should look like they're going away from you because that's what the rest of the wing is doing. So here's your other option, making mistakes, I'm going to fix it. In order to fix it, what I decided to do was mix a thick acrylic in the same color as what the feathers are on the wings, and then what I did was I just put that straight over the dark lines that showed which way the wings or the feathers were layered, and then I added the dark line on the other side so they sort of swapped which direction they were layered, if that makes sense. And then just some little finishing details, just making sure that there's a definite shadow underneath them, you know for sure they're standing on that ground, um, just shadows elsewhere, make sure things pop a little bit more and just adding a little bit of a glow to the horns.
And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope my commentary was insightful, at the very least entertaining. Um, please let me know if there's anything I can do better, if you have any suggestions, if you enjoyed it. If there's something else you'd like me to record a video on where I talk at you through the whole thing, let me know. If you want to see more of my artwork, all of my social medias are below. I update those daily and occasionally, as you found out in this video, you guys get a chance to make a decision for me on how I'm going to do something or what I'm going to film. So it's probably a good idea to follow those. Uh, you can also like this video if you liked this video, I guess. And if you enjoyed this and you want to see more stuff, please feel free to click the subscribe button too. And now I'm off to do commissions for the rest of the evening and freak out about the fact that I finally get this game tomorrow. I've been waiting five years to play with a dragon puppy bird. Excite hype, much hype. If you guys are excited, let me know down below in the comments. I want to nerd out with you. Okay, bye. If you don't hear from me tomorrow, you know what I'm doing.